Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second session of the CCAP Data Camp. I am Christine Bantay from the Space Data Mobilization and Applications Division. I hope everyone is doing well today. So, ang dami natin ng first session, um, mga 500 tayo sa Zoom, and then we had uh, some participants then watching on the YouTube live last week. So, mar uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng umatend last week. And to those who were not able to enter, I hope you were able to tune into our YouTube live stream then. So after the first session last week, uh, there were still new registrations. Uh, and we are also keeping count in the live stream. So can we meet the number of participants from the first session today? Let's find out. So I'm going to excited na kayo for our session today as we explore the world of geospatial data processing. Today, we will focus on geospatial concepts and we'll introduce geopandas. Before we start, um, here are some few reminders. So we expect participants to conduct themselves in manner free from discriminatory practices. Participants should mute their microphones and turn off their cameras when not in use. You are encouraged to use the chat box and wait for the speaker to acknowledge you during the Q&A session. So the question and answer portion is uh, allotted uh, after all the speakers' presentations. And for everyone's information, this session is being recorded and live streamed in YouTube. Um, an evaluation and feedback form link will be sent after the session. Please answer them to receive your certificate of attendance. And lastly, our lectures will include interactive notebooks like you've seen last week, which we will share the link for you to copy. The instructions will be presented later and you can follow along uh, as uh, kasabay ng presentations or choose to do them later after the event. So again, please note that we are being live streamed on YouTube and we will be also posting the details on our Discord server. So join us on Discord. The link will be posted on the chat box. So finally, now we will start the program. To give a recap of the previous session and to introduce today's session, let's call on Jalen John Dribble. Hi, Jay. Hello, uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just uh, let me share my screen. So, hello and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm here to give you a recap of what happened during our first session of uh, the CCAP Data Cup. Mm. Alright, na miss nyo po ba ako? <laughs> sa mga attendees po nung day one. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-attend and I hope na nag-enjoy tayong lahat sa mga uh, presentations and lectures. So, uh, with a whopping uh, 500 plus attendees and sa mga nanood po sa live stream natin sa YouTube dyan, and shout out po sa inyong lahat. Job well done guys and I hope you learned something during uh, our first day. And sana po excited po tayong lahat na pagpatuloy pa uh, pag-attend sa ating mga future sessions ng ating data cup. So during our first day, we had two topics na na-cover. First is yung intro to Google Colab which was presented by Miss Ayra Villapando. Miss Ayra discussed what is Google Colab and how to use it. So just a tip lang sa mga participants, during this data cup, we will be heavily relying on this platform. So I advise you to explore and study how to use this tool further during your free time. And then we also covered the introduction to Python, which was delivered to us by Mr. Randy Peros. So Sir Randy discussed the basic operations and functions of Python. Then Python will be the main programming language that we will be using throughout the camp. So I advise you guys also to give time to explore and play around using Python. And so that's it. I hope you guys learned a lot during our first day. So looking forward for today's sessions, we will be, we will be having three speakers for this afternoon. Sir I, RK will be discussing geospatial concepts. Sir Nico will be 
discussing GeoPandas and vector visualizations. And yours truly will show you some platforms and on where you can get geospatial data. So ready na ba kayo guys? Uh, let's all listen to our speakers and enjoy the cup. Thank you and welcome to our CCAP Data Camp Day 2. Thank you. Thank you, Dre, for the brief recap and introduction. So we are now at, let me see, we are now at 296 participants and we're still expecting more. Um, a shout out to our campers from different institutions, colleges, and universities. So let's now begin with our lecture. Here to discuss with us the concepts of geospatial data is our chief from uh, HPCISD, uh, RK Aranas. Hi, hi, RK, are you ready? Ah uh, yes, uh, I didn't so uh, share the screen ko. Ay, sorry na share screen pa. Hindi ako share. Ah, thank you. Sige, so... Sorry, one second, sir. Okay. Ayan. So, kita ba yung screen ko? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, Dre and Rain. So, ayan. Good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm here to discuss, you know, I know, uh, just spatial concepts. But before I start, uh, I'll just start off with this quote. So all models are wrong, but some are useful. So I know you're here to learn about uh, how to process data. But yung, when we process data, diba, we are taking uh, something from the real world. So like we're modeling phenomena, like siguro mga storms or uh, mga traffic data. But yung ginagawa natin in the process, we are... Um, Simplifying the real world, we are abstracting some things. So we really have to, we, we have, um, it's just, I'm posting this code to remind us that when we do data analysis, we are actually uh, simplifying the real world. That in a way, they are all lies, but we are uh, picking them for our use. So for this topic, uh, I mentioned uh, the spatial data concept, but for now, we'll be focusing on uh, vector uh, data models. So, sa geospatial data analysis, may dalawang uh, models, main data models. Yung isa is yung raster, which is yung mga nakikita niyo siguro sa satellite imagery, yung mga pictures. At yung vectors, yung ano, more of, uh, yung parang mukha na silang drawing. So, I think uh, before I go on, I would like to start with what, what this is not about. So baka yung iba sa atin uh, may titake ng physics class or galing sa earth sciences. So maybe may naisin na kayong vector, di ba? Yung may magnitude at may anong tawag na, yung mga directions. So no, we will not be discussing that. So you can take a break from that. So hindi itong mga vector na to. So yung mga nasa earth science din, hindi rin tayo mag ng mga vector. Ano yun, mga vector wind maps. Ngayon. Hindi. So, yung vector data, like I said, is parang ito, more like ito. So, yung mga drawing, yung nakikita nyo sa Google Map, at least yung itsura niya, or like yung, I guess, vector sa Illustrator, mas malapit siya doon. So, sa vector data, we use it to simplify yung real world for data analysis. So, yung vector data, as you can see dito, may tatlo siyang main na types, I would say. So, if you can see dito, uh, my points, uh, my lines, saka polygons. So, more of ano siya. Uh, Sisimplify natin yung real world. So, yung basic unit niya, more or less, is yung coordinate pair. So, ano siya. Yung x, y. So, okay. Pasadahan ka lang sa isa. So, yung points, for example, is uh, x, y location siya. So, one uh, zero dimension lang siya, di ba? So, x, y lang siya. So, yung point, is, or isang, we can say na parang vertex siya. Tapos kung may dalawa kang points, at least, uh, yun, yun yung line na data model. So at, at least two points. And then yung last is yung uh, polygon, which is uh, three or more points that are connected and closed. So I think enough with the definitions. I will pakita ko na lang sa you know, more of a demo na lang. Uh, mas, I think mas madali siyang illustrate. So... Kita niyo naman yung screen ko na. So, so pakita ka lang. So, yung points. So, I'm a satellite. Kunyari, nasa tayo, nakalipad tayo. 
So, ayun. So, tayo natin sa points. I'm from Storigao City. So, zoom in lang tayo. So, for example, medyo matagal lang. Hindi nakauwi. So, medyo naligo ako. So, for example, um, yung point data is, kunyari lang, we are, ito, ito, kotse ba ito? Mayroon dito. So, if we're gonna model this, for example, for our studies, uh, gano'n tayo ng mga center, center, center ng mga building. So, yung point data model is, would be, uh, point lang siya. So, yun yung pinili nating uh, abstraction. Uh, kita ba? Yung, uh, gawin ka na lang mas matingkad. Kasi, uh, so, yun yung uh, point na data natin. So, we we chose to model yung mga bagay as points siya. So, pag tinignan mo yung uh, data niya, uh, ito, ito yung, uh, discuss ko pala ito later, but this is a GeoJSON, na one of the vector data formats. So, ano siya, di ba? Uh, coordinates lang siya, yung points. May coordinates lang siya. So, this is what, it li what it's like to model a points. So coordinate pairs lang siya. So, we can add more points. Uh, kunyari ito. Kunyari lang sampling locations yan. So, yun yung mga points natin. So, that is an uh, example of a point data. So, coordinate pairs lang talaga siya. And then, ay, hindi niya na kukopya yung mga ano. So, yan. Mga uh, points lang sila. So, yun yung points. So, you, you can use it to model phenomenon like sampling sites or mga posti siguro, mga puno. It depends on what your what phenomenon you're modeling. And then, yung next, ano yung next? Uh, yung next is lines, di ba? Uh, so, for example, um, gusto mong i-model yung mga streets. So, may ano ka? Uh, gawang mo natin yung streets. So, ay. so, I think this is yung national highway namin. So, hindi ka na siya babuhin namin. Hindi ka malaki yung highway. Kanyari hanggang dito ka lang. Ay, malabo siya. So, pakapalin lang natin. This is for visualization ng pala. Wala tayong effect sa analysis. Let's go in ko lang siya. Yellow para matingkad. So, ito. For example, for this type, uh, um, for example, yung interest natin sa mga roads, mga rivers. So, yun yung gagamitin natin. So, yung, ano, yung line. So, pag tinignan mo yung, ano niya, yung, uh, yung data na niya, Lines, uh, dito representation niya, it's called a line string. But usually we just call them lines. So pag napansin niyo, di ba, yung line, collection lang siya ng mga vertices. So ito yung mga ano na. So that's how you model a line. So as a data model, yung, it's it's at least one or more. I'm sorry, no. At least two rather. At, at least two na points na connected lang. And then... Yung last na primitive or uh, basic data model type is yung it's called the polygon. So, familiar naman tayo sa polygon. So, so I'll just make a polygon here. So, pag may model mo yung polygon. So, di ba ano siya? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Naka six vertices ako, di ba? Pero yung distinction niya sa line is closed siya. So, Bounded siya. So, ito. Um, yung fill, ano lang to, uh, for visualization purpose. Ah, hindi lang. Sige, red na lang. Okay. Ay, may opacity siya. So, yun. Uh, usually, it's used for mga, ayun, yung mga bagay na may uh, May boundaries at sarado siya. So, when now we want to treat as sarado. So, like, ito. This is, I think, ito yung Grand's Provincial Grandstand. Ano, sorry. So, 
yun na siya. So, if you're going to, kung yung analysis, unit of analysis mo, for example, is gusto mo mga building, so that's what the uh, polygon uh, type is for. So, kung, so, usually, kung may analysis ka, marami ka ng mga building, so marami ka mga layers. So, I think, uh, to illustrate lang, kasi yung line, di ba? Pwede naman tayong gumawa ng line din. Pero hindi siya closed. Line lang siya. Hindi nakakover yung um, internal, yung gitna. Kasi may, may ano kasi siya, may implications kasi yung data type na pipiliin nyo kung ano yung pwede nyong gawing analysis. Like yung point, uh, zero ano siya, di ba? Zero dimensional. And then so, wala siyang, uh, coordinate pair lang yung meron ka. But if you have the line string, uh, the line string, you can compute for its length, di ba? And then, kasi may ano ka. Uh, marami kang vertices, tas yung distance, yung accumulated distance ng lahat. And then kung may, if you have the polygon, you will have uh, yung area niya, may area computations. May bawat type may special ano siya. So, yun. So, that's, yun yung basic niya na, uh, at least sa uh, geometry. Pero you, what's special about uh, the vector data model, kasi kung geometry lang yung habol natin, di ba, ba't din na lang tayo mag-paint or mag-illustrator, di ba? So, yung maganda sa vector data model is you combine actually yung uh, geometry, nakita na natin yung geometry ng tatlo, no? And attributes. So, an attribute is something... Uh, that describes yung geometry. So like, say, balik tayo dito sa uh, point na to. Kunyari, sampling station natin to. Oh, well, sampling, kunyari lang, oh, wala akong data. Uh, sampling station 1. Kunyari, nag, nag ano tayo ng temperature. So pwede kasi tayong maglagay ng ano. Tapos, sa, sample, sa site na to, uh, kunyari, 100 degrees Celsius. So, boiling na yung temperature dito. So so sa point na yun di ba may nahalo may nalagay ka ng ano may may ano ka na uh, aside sa hindi na lang siya geometry di ba it, it has it has meaning now so like ito other point ano ba siya uh, okay ito Yung iba, for example, 70 and then ito, 80 degrees Celsius. So, hindi na siya, ano, uh, hindi na siya drawing lang. May meaning na siya. I think na hirapan ako mag-isip ng mental model dati, but I think it, a better way to think of this is, in, let's not think of them as drawings. Let's think of them as, uh, isipin nyo parang spreadsheet siya. Pero di ba yung na, uh, natural spreadsheet, ay yung regular spreadsheets, yung bawat row, we can do computations on them. Mga one, if uh, add mo yung mga row, subtract, multiply, whatever, power. Um, yung dito nga lang, imagine yun na lang na bawat row, may associated siyang drawing, uh, may, may associated siyang drawmetry. So aside sa yung mga values, like yung temperature value or yung my name siguro siya or whatever, yung dito, bawat row will have its own description then at yung it has a location associated location in the ground so like itong si ano simple lang din natin lagi ng name so like ito for example yung road na to siya yung national highway so bawat uh, bawat ano mo yung geometry mo may associated siyang um uh, tawag <laughs> descriptions so uh, how does this change things well, since dati, kung sa spreadsheet, di ba, mag add ka lang, you can do computations like magkaano yung ano sa Metro Manila, magkaano yung oil or gas or rent or whatever. But those are questions, yun yung kaya mong questions na gawin sa spreadsheet. But then, uh, how do you ask? You can't ask questions sa spreadsheet like, gano'n siya kalayo from the river, gano'n siya ka lapit sa road, di ba? Or like, schools ba? How many? How do you get all the schools na malapit sa isang road or malapit sa isang uh, building or whatever? So that's what uh, you can do with vector uh, data. So 
yung may mga operations kang pwedeng gawin with them. So, I think uh, demo ka na lang siya later. Uh, or ni Nico. So, yun, to summarize lang muna. So, ito yung primitives or basic types ng uh, vector data. So, my points uh, which are individual XY locations. Tapos may center. Okay, ito, ito yung mga examples niya. Center plot, mga tower, mga cell tower, something locations. And then you can have uh, lines which are, yun, mga roads, mga streams, any linear feature really. And then yung polygons, which are yung mga, may, mga bagay na may boundaries. So like lakes, buildings. And actually you can, uh, you can imagine the possibilities na siguro na this is not just about things you can see. Like dito, we can imagine na uh, itong mga rice fields, diba? we can make uh, we can make polygons na may rice field. We can make, um, we can digitize rice fields. Those are things we can see, but actually we can actually, we can also make, uh, we can model mga bagay na hindi nakikita, like yung, Ano natin, uh, register of deeds, yung mga titulo ng lupa. Yung lupa naman, hindi necessary nakikita, di ba? I mean, makikita natin siya if there are buildings na there, but hindi sila nag exist in reality. May ano lang, may measurements lang. So we, we, that's how tinatrack yung mga parcels or yung nakikita nyo yung mga uh, administrative uh, boundaries sa ano. So that's uh, how vector data is used. And so, ayun, vector data. Uh, geometry plus yung attributes na nag-describe sa kanya. Yun yung medyo uh, basic niya na description. And then, uh, yung next is, uh, why, why would you use uh, vector data? Well, uh, yung ano ba yung advantages niya over yung other data, which is uh, raster, which will be discussed later. Uh, next. Uh, so, yung vector data is, well, yung maganda sa kanya, di ba, curated na siya. So it means nandun what the researcher or whoever is doing it decide that it's important. So you don't have to filter it anymore. Al alam mo na yun yung intention niya. So medyo, in a way, medyo self-describing siya, di ba? Alam mo na kung ano, ano yung kinonsider na important, ano yung point nitong ano na to. Tapos yung isang maganda din sa uh, vector data is we can add, uh, nakita nyo kanina, di ba? May, pwede ka magkaroon ng multiple attributes like Yung point na to, hindi lang siya XY, pwede mo siyang lagyan ng name, yung temperature value, siguro kung anong time mo kinuha yung, yung measurement, uh, stuff like that, uh, other metadata. So, yung isang point, uh, you can, your isang line, you can put so much information on it. So, and then yung isang advantage niya rin is uh, efficient yung data storage niya kasi as you can imagine, ano siya, di ba? Uh, yung kanina, mga vertex lang yun eh. So, mga points lang siya. And then, nandun yung attributes niya, which are also just text or numbers. At yung kanina nga, yung nakita natin, uh, it's, it was just plain plain text lang siya, di ba? So, medyo uh, malaki pa nga yung kinakain space nun. But usually, when you use it sa uh, analysis, mas maliit na yun eh. Compressed na na binary data. So, the cost, the cost savings are actually uh, big. Compared sa, sige, preview ka na rin. Compared sa raster, for example, picture kasi yun. So, uh, parang grid siya. So, regardless of my value, hindi. May occupy talaga siyang space. So, I guess yung mga gumagawa ng uh, art dito, you can compare din siguro. Eh, analogo siya, I think, rin sa, pakorek na lang kung mali ang ano ka, example, like say, yung mga nagagawa mo sa Photoshop, yung mga rasters mo, di ba, as opposed sa yung mga vector illustrations mo sa illustrator. If you make the same thing, uh, magkakaiba sila, di ba? So, more ganun yung isa sa mga advantage niya. So, some disadvantages naman ng, ano, ng I mean, you know, nothing is perfect. It depends on your need. Yung ano naman is, uh, ano ba yung potential disadvantages ng uh, vector? Yung one is potential loss of detail. Uh, think balikan ko yung ginawa ko. Like, yung road, di ba? Nang naalala yung ginawa ko yung road. Ito siya in real life. Pero pag, nag, nag, pag ginawa mo yung data, pwede kasing isimplify mo siya, di ba? May mga curves, curves yan eh. Pwedeng 
tamad ako. So, yung data ko medyo. Ayun. Yung in-approximate ko lang siya. So, he, kung, especially kung hindi ka yung gumagawa ng data, hindi mo nakokontrol yung ano, hindi mo nakokontrol yung Uh, yung quality niya. So, hindi mo, unless you had strong uh, constraints sa simula, medyo may chance na may loss of detail, di ba? Yung road mo, for example, hindi siya ganun ka. Yung mga edges, hindi, yung mga curves na maliliit, hindi mo na siya nakapapture. So, may ganun kang risk with vector data. Kasi nga, simplification lang siya and it is up to the data producer na gawin yun. This is for the geometry part. Yung isang potential loss of detail sa phenomenon at yung isa naman is yung potential bias. So ito naman is yung sa attributes. So di ba uh, pinili niya yung mga bak- yung mga descriptions na pinili niya. Uh, ba- bakit yun yung pinili niya? Ano yung ano yung hindi niya sinama na i-record. So th- those things are ano medyo problem uh, issue magiging issue siya minsan. So and then yung isa naman is yung calculation sa sa vector data is ano mas computationally expensive siya kasi as hindi siya katulad ng raster yung raster kasi uh, which we'll discuss next se- uh, session ano yung raster kasi parang grids lang siya so parang matrix na pag nag-add kayo nagmamagma ka lang parang nag-add subtract ka lang so diretso diretso lang siya dito uh, geometric computations talaga siya So I think wait try ko na lang pakita. So sample na lang siguro. Like yung isang operations na kaya mong gawin for example sa raster I mean sa vector is wait ko ko lang yung data ko. If for example lang. So uh Ayun, nakapakita ano. Hindi pala nakashare kanina. So, ito, for example, itong mga point data to na, nung, um, these are, ano siya, community pantries, nung, yung, so, ito yung volunteer na data nun. So, yung mga community pantries where people can go, uh, uh, get food if they need it, where people who want to share food, uh, share it. So, for example, dito, uh, yung isang geometric magagawa mo, for example, sa uh, yung isang operation na kaya mong gawin sa vector, uh, sa vector data is gagawa ka ng buffer. So, so, yung buffer, what it does is from this point, kukunin mo yung uh, yung lahat ng ano na around it. So, mag- uh, mas demo ka na lang. So, for example, ito. So, 10 kilometers away. So, yun. Uh, kita niyo ba? Masyado. So, ito. So, di ba? Uh, from the point, nag, nag-perform ka ng operation, nag-buffer ka. So, lah- uh, may distance around it. So, well, it, it looked really fast, di ba? Pero pag kinumpute mo yun, actually, ang nangyayari, from this point, di ba, kinukumpute mo lahat ng points na around, uh, yun, 10 kilometers from it. So, Well, our computers are really fast now, pero kinu-compute niya actually lahat ng points nito. So you can imagine pag yung data set mo is, ito konti lang yung data set ko. I think nasa hundreds lang to. Imagine if you have like a, a thousand or a million points. That will take really long. So yun yung isa sa mga problems na. So yung mga other geospatial uh, operations, i-discuss na sa, ano, sa geopandas. And then some caveats. Yung kanina, uh, yung data natin is, ay hindi ko pala nasabi kanina, yung sinabi ko kasi, di ba, ano lang siya, location plus geometry. But uh, pag yung geometry lang yung iniisip mo, uh, it's also just a drawing. You have to tie it down sa, ano, di ba, sa back to the location sa Earth. So kaya may coordinate reference system. So for this, di, uh, nagninese- kailangan siya kasi, uh, yung Earth kasi is hindi siya flat. Yung bilog, ano yung Earth, di ba? Uh, 3D siya. And hindi natutunan natin that uh, it's a sphere, but it's, not, it's a sphere and then it was an oblate spheroid, but uh, it's an ellipsoid. Pero 
later nang nag-GE ako, I learned na it's actually a geoid. So, medyo marami siyang ano. But it depends on your purposes. So, minsan, you want to simplify things. Pero, pag ganun nga, uh, you have to convert. Kasi, like, yung nakukuha nyo, yung pinaka-familiar ko yung location, I would think, ano siya, di ba? Yung latlong. Uh, so, mga ano yun, di ba? Pag napansin nyo, degrees siya. Decimal degrees. Which is fine kung hindi mo kailangan yung physical measurements. But in the physical realm, nagko-compute tayo, di ba? Pag say, interested ka sa distance between point A and point B, you actually want how it is in real, yung, tawag dun, yung relevance sa iyo. Like, how long would it take to drive? So, you will think in terms of kilometers, mga ganun. So, and unfortunately, kasi yung Earth, if naalala niyo sa geography class, nagbubulge siya sa equator, di ba? So, yung isang degree, isang degree ng latitude or longitude, it's not, hindi siya equally, ano, hindi siya, nagta-translate one is to, sa ano, diretso sa meters. So, nagbab, like, mag-iiba siya depending where you are on the earth. So, that's why, uh, ito, ito yung laging tinuturo sa amin sa class. Yung, di ba parang yung, ano ka, pag may uh, orange ka, then you peel it, then you, kasi, di ba, 3D yung mundo, pero yung nakikita natin sa mapa, flat na siya. So, kaya, pinaflatten siya. And then there are so many ways to flatten it. Kaya I think yung nakikita nyo yung mga sensationalist na ano na the, no, we have been taught a lot. Yung mga mapa natin na yung Mercator. Malaki yung Greenland, mga ganun. So, all technical, uh, yun, balik dun sa sabi ko kanina. Everything is, uh, all models are wrong. So, pero yun, yung Mercator, for example, it was preselected naman precisely to ano. Sa Mercator kasi na preserve it's mainly used for navigation so na preserve mo yung uh, yung directions which are important for uh, ship captains ng ship na nagna-navigate so kaya ganoon so ito for the, for your purposes uh, actually hindi naman to masyadong kailangan but uh, caveat lang para alam niyo at least na yung mga coordinate systems niyo minsan pag magpipick na kayo ng maraming data later maghahalo-halo kayo ng data tapos hindi sila maglalapat mga ganun. It's because magkaiba yung projections na ginamit nila. So, like yung usual makita mo, the degrees, tapos yung makikita mo. But yung gagamitin mo usually for uh, computations are ano na, mga meters or kilometers. So, yun yung projected niya. Parang nasa flattened na siya. So, yung components na usually is yung datum. So, kung ano yung ano yung reference niya na shape. So, kung anong ellipsoid yun for most purposes, gagam- makikita nyo siguro unless you go to geography or geology or uh, GE, usually yung makikita nyo is, yung pinaka ma-encounter nyo siguro is yung WGS84 na ellipsoid which is yun yung ginagamit ng ano, ng GPS na na tools nyo. And then, yung projection is yung compute, ano lang naman siya, yung mathematical model from parang transforming yung nasa 3D na uh, ellipsoid papunta dun sa flat. Tapos may mga additional parameters lang like gano'n ka ano yung mapa. Gano'n siya ka I mean nasaan yung center ng mapa stuff like that. So actually I think it's most of it kung kung may questions I think I'll uh, later na lang after nung kay uh, Nick sa end So, to recap lang, so yung vector data model is a combination ng, it has three types. So, yung points, uh, yung lines, at polygons. There are actually more, but these are the most common. And I, for the purposes of this data camp, uh, dito tayo mag-focus. And then, uh, yun, yung mga advantages na na-mention ko kanina. And yung data format, for ay, pala data formats, So, yung data format, yung pinakita ko kanina, it is uh, GeoJSON. So, programmers might be familiar with the uh, JSON, yung JavaScript uh, object notation. So, yung GeoJSON is just a uh, special type nun. So, yung dito, yung, this is the text na format. So, I think Nico will use uh, some GeoJSON later. Ay, hindi ko pala na-share. So, 
yung napansin niyo kanina so yung Jadir Jason naman uh, encoding na to medyo deep uh, dive na ng konti so yung yung geometry na, na component na nakita is yun dito siya yung describe niya yung geometry and then kung may nagkasya okay wait lang nagkasya Ito na lang yung pantry. Uh, so yung geometry is yung coordinates, for example. At yung properties, siya yung kanina, yung, sub, yung mentioned kong attributes. So dito din siya. So if you look at it as a table, ano naman siya. So ganyan. So for this is used mostly for uh, web development and for more uh, more modern, I guess, na GIS. Uh, the uh, other... Major format is the shape file, so I think we won't we won't use it uh, here, or at least we won't uh, dive deep into that. Bakal in later uh, sessions, like say with the SDMAD, bakal mag uh, offer sila ng uh, GIS class for that. So yun yung um, pinaka major format for geospatial uh, vectors. I mean, it's di, di, not major; it's just the most popular. It's an old format that never died. So, and then. Yeah, actually, I think that's it for my talk. Kung my questions, I'll just answer your questions later. All right. So, uh, thank you, RK, for that very informative lecture. Uh, for me, madali talagang intindihin yung isang topic kapag na-visualize yung concept. So, I'd say that's a very good way to introduce the topic. And I hope everybody learned a lot as well. So, our question and answer portion will be after all the speakers have presented. And if you have any questions now, you can type them on the chat box and they will be addressed later. So before we move on to our next lecture, it's time for a quiz. So if you have attended a lot of our previous CCAP uh, webinar, you know that we have prepared quizzes. And uh, so now, um, let's give the floor to Draylen for the icebreaker. Hi again, Jay. Hello po. Hello uh, <laughs> again. Uh, wait lang po. Prepare ko lang yung yung pins. Ayun, hello. Um, so good afternoon again. So to energize our afternoon, uh, <laughs> kagaya po nung day one, uh, let's uh, ano, energize our brain and practice ano, uh, thinking naman. <laughs> so to join, uh, you can access www.menti.com and then enter the code 57238161. And then, or pull up your phones so we can take it on your mobile phones also. Just scan the QR to access the site. So, hintay lang po tayo mga, ano, ay lang, oh, wait, ay, wala pa lang intro. <laughs> wait lang po natin makapasok yung majority ng participants. So, okay, 21. Siguro pabutin natin mga 250. So, yun pala, uh, before we start, uh, as much as possible, please use your ano, uh, real name. Yeah. Uh, medyo... Ano po tayo para at least makilala natin yung isa't isa. Uh, and then yung top, uh, top three uh, winners, pasend na lang po sa ccap at lisa.com.ph mamaya yung screenshot. Uh, part kayo ng top three. So guys, uh, join. Tapos <laughs> natin magkabot tayo ng... 
pa yata 250 or siguro mga 2. Pasok na mga suke. So 200 siguro start na tayo pa. So we can ano, have time more time on the Q&A later. So, habal na lang po yung iba. So, 197, ipapasok pa po ba? 198, 199, 200. Okay, let's go. Ayun, mer meron pala eh. Dito pala tayo dapat naghintay. Wait lang, mayroon lang po akong i-check. Ah, technical support. Ah, wait lang po. May i-adjust lang tayo. May nakikita at tayo. <laughs> May i-adjust lang po. Pa-wait lang po. Ah, mga 3 minutes. All right. Sorry about that. Nagkaroon tayo ng konting technical difficulty. So, mamaya na lang po tayo magpapakwiz. Uh, wait for it before we end the uh, webinar. So, for now, let's move on to the next tutorial, which will be presented by Nico Pante. So, Nico will introduce uh, a powerful tool to work with geospatial data, especially vector data. So again, just a reminder, if you have questions, please use the chat box. So without further ado, uh, let's all welcome Nico. Hi, Nico. Please take it away. Um, hello. So, ano na lang, pabilisa na lang mag-pintot sa quiz mamaya. So yan, hi, hello. 
Um, ako si Nico Pante. So, katim ko si na Sir R.K. Sidrilan and yung mga previous speakers from the uh, previous session. So, um, ang title ng presentation ko today ay Introduction to GeoPandas. Uh, parte ng trabaho namin ang pag-automate ng processes na galing data sa uh, sa kalawakan, pati na rin yung pag uh, manipulate ng mga ito gamit ng mga vector data. So, um, usually, yung mga process na to will undergo the same process. Kaya, um, kinocode namin. So, when we uh, use this, uh, when we make workflows for it, it lessens the time to distribute it. So, Yan. Um, pero yung presentation ko today will be an introduction to uh, one of these tools na gamit namin. Ito yung GeoPandas. So, and yet, um, I'm sure na ano, after this session, you, you can think of what other applications you can use it for. So, ano ang GeoPandas? So, Ang GeoPandas, it makes working with geospatial data like working with other kinds of data in Python easy. So, um, I, I'm guessing na familiar kayo sa data science and data is very ubiquitous. So, may data kahit saan. And sa Python, it makes easy to work with data. So much more kung geospatial siya. So uh, with Python, it makes it easy. So it was founded in 2013, not long ago. Uh, to nine years pa lang. So I think I'm just, I was just learning to code back then. Uh, um, uh, next, it's it's a community-led project supported by a wide range of people all over the world. So, uh, it ang um, GeoPandas ay isang open source project where people uh, support, uh, build, um, improve it by uh, uh, adding features uh, constantly over time. So, yeah. So, hindi lang siya ano, isang tao ang gumagawa. And for it, it enables operation that would otherwise require spatial databases as, such as PostGIS. So, before GeoPandas, um, um, to work around with uh, geospatial data, especially vector data, kailangan natin ng um, databases. And if you are familiar sa mga databases, we know how little tough they are. Uh, for example, um, you would set up a, a server and uh, then, and you know, yung operations nila, uh, much more kung may uh, uh, spatial component yung mga data. So, ang GeoPandas ay maraming building blocks. Ang isa dito ay pandas. So, I cannot uh, talk about GeoPandas without mentioning pandas. So, pandas in itself is a powerful tool for data analysis. Uh, kung data scientist kayo, probably familiar kayo dito. So, may mga machine learning stuff, um, visualization, presentation, yan. Another is Shapely. So, ginagamit ang Shapely for dealing with geometric shapes. Kung paano mag, uh, kunin yung mga um, overlays or pan, uh, yung mathematical operations with uh, geometry. Ang next is PyProj. Ito naman ay uh, for dealing with projections. So, uh, based kanina, uh, usually we have to Mm, uh, from a, a 3D perspective, we want to make it, uh, uh, we want to reproject it into 2D. 
Ang sunod ay matplot libraries. Uh, ginagamit ito for data visualization. And finally, uh, Fiona, it's used for reading and writing geographic files. Um, Nabring up po din yung tong mga building blocks kasi uh, later when we want to go deeper sa, ano, sa paggamit ng GeoPandas, uh, we might want to explore them as well. So it can make us more powerful kung halimbawa uh, di natin magawa in GeoPandas alone. Uh, gusto natin yan. So I will move now to my notebook. Nakashare screen pa naman ako. Uh, you can see my notebook. Uh, so yan. So, um, ito yung ano. Yung, uh, hi, Nico. Yung, as, yung sheet ata dito. Ag slides yung nakita namin. Okay. So, uh, let me read it. Um, no screen ko na lang. So, yan. Uh, ito, okay na. Notebook ko na ba yung kita? Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you sa thumbs up. So, yan. Um, here is the outline of this notebook. And uh, we will get the feel of Geopadas as we go along with this. So, yan. So, uh, ito. <clears throat> naturo naman sa previous presentation, sa previous session, kung so paano mag-install ng uh, libraries sa notebook. So, na-mention ko yung building blocks. And you will see other... Uh, libraries as well, tapos yung Geo Pandas. So, you just uh, run this. So, ito. Connect yung machines. Uh, medyo madali lang naman siya. Ayan. Ayun, okay na. So, um, how do you import GeoPandas? So, normally, ito yung pag-import ng GeoPandas. Import GeoPandas as GPD. Um, usually, ginagawang shortened yung mga, ano, yung mga libraries na yun, such as PD, or import pandas as PD. So that um, when we search for workarounds sa mga problems natin, um, madali makita yung ano, uh, solutions sa sa internet. So, I will just run this. So, how how do you read a vector data sa GeoPandas? So, um, later, uh, Drilan will discuss how uh, different sources of data. So, um, what I will show now uh, is a downloaded data. So uh, I want to show you the boundaries ng countries of the world. So a shape file is a file, uh, vector file that looks like this. Marami siyang component. Um, may that shape, uh, may database file, and others as well. So you can uh, upload them into a drive, into your drive. Then sa files ninyo, uh, you should mount your data. So, paano siya basahin? So, uh, we will just specify the location ng data natin. So, in my case, dito siya nakalagay. And how do you read that data and sa GeoPanda? So, the syntax is uh, yung GeoPandas, uh, GPD, and read file, and the location of your shapefile. When we uh, deal with shapefile, 
we uh, we usually refer to the .shp. However, ang pag sinabing shapefile, uh, it refers to the full set of uh, this data. Yan. Uh, interconnected silang lahat. So, yan. Um, maybe this. Ayun na. If na, na-read na siya. And uh, to see this data, we can use the dot .head uh, method or function. Uh, Mapipreview yung data. So, ayun. Uh, our downloaded data na boundaries na countries. Ay, ito na siya. So, uh, tabular form siya. Uh, we can observe a column na geometry. And each feature or each entry is represented by a geometry type. Uh, na mention kanina yung mga geometry types. So, in this case, uh, yung mga boundaries are represented by polygons. We can quickly visualize them through the use of yung dot plot na uh, functions or dot explore. So let's see that. Uh, ito yung ano, output ng dot plot. So ang dot plot ay isang um, image tapos na uh, graph, graphical format siya. Uh, okay. um, it sits a uh, function ng um, matplot library and yung matplot library was uh, usually gamit siya sa mga uh, pag-visualize din ng data. For example, uh, AI is something. Yung dot explore naman will preview your output. Uh, that's it. Will output uh, are web, uh, parang ano, uh, HTML na, um, na visualization. So, ito yung itsura niya. So, apart sa, ano, sa interactive yung um, presentation, we can uh, quickly see attributes ng vector when we uh, hover our mouse to the uh, geometry. For example, Philippines, you can see the, the area based dun sa binasa natin attribute. Uh, ito din lang naman siya. So, ayan. Um, uh, we can also read from other uh, data types as well. So, kanina, uh, shapefile. Uh, okay. Uh, it's wrong. Uh, we can also read from GeoJSON. So, nakita natin kami yung file, CRK. Uh, another data type is GeoJSON. So, if we have um, a link of GeoJSON, which usually looks like this. Oh, no. Teka, not responding. Ayan, mag mabigyan talaga pag ano. Mga JSON file, uh, close to na ito before it crashes my, my, my browser. So yan, my, GG, my GeoJSON tayo. So we can read directly from ano, by providing the location of that link. So yan, uh, let me read that. So ayan, may ano tayo, ang binasa natin ay provinces. Ang GeoJSON natin ay um, administrative province, uh, boundaries ng provinces. Except that I um, manually modified yung NCR ang provinces sa Metro Manila ay made it sa NCR. Mm, ayun. And here is our preview. So again, we can plot them. And I... I Nagdagdag ako ng parameter to uh, modify kung ano yung size ng plot natin used to. Uh, we can show also the explore. Ayan. So, um, what's a geodata frame? So, nakita natin na we have read a geodata frame. Yun yung tawag dun. So, 
uh, GDF, we um, um, nilagay natin yung uh, geodata, um, geodata frame sa uh, GDF na variable. So, uh, uh, ano tong datang ito? So, it's called uh, geodata frame. So, ito yung uh, geospatial data na uh, binasa natin gamit ang geopandas. So, it's now a uh, Python object called uh, geodata frame. So, ano, ano nga ba ito? So, yan. Um, very simple lang naman. So, ang geodata frame, it's simply a table containing the geospatial data. So, may uh, ge geometry column siya that holds the ge uh, geometry information ng kada features. Uh, the rest of the columns are the properties or attributes that describe the data, uh, such as yung um, name, etc., code, etc. And um, a while ago, sinabi ko yung pandas. So, ang pandas may data frame. So, Ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay ang pandas walang geospatial component. So just remove this geometry. It's a pandas data frame. And um, yung mga ano, uh, geometry are represented by uh, um, uh, a format called well-known text format. So for example, yung polygon, yan ito yung itsura niya. So ito yung uh, primitives ng ano yun. Uh, format na yun. So, uh, um, sinabi ko it's still a uh, pandas data frame and we can actually leverage sa power ng pandas to do uh, data manipulations. So, for example, um, may data ako. I have this data. So, um, Bili lang po manually, joke lang, kung saan galing ang mga participants natin. So, um, it's another thing na ginawa ko. Pero, but I have the count of our registrants. Uh, parang kakakontrol din, uh, kinuha. So, uh, what I want to do is parang basahin natin yung registrant, uh, registrants na yun. Uh, basahin natin, uh, punin natin as a, a data frame. So, uh, ayan. Data frame siya kasi walang geospatial component. And ang gagawin ko ay uh, may count ako ng uh, participants from each provinces and a while ago, binasa natin yung um, administrative boundaries ng Philippines uh, sa provinces. What I want to do is um um it emerge sila so that yung count yung data frame na na which I have the number of participants maging um magkaroon ng geospatial component uh, so that later you can um uh, uh, visualize them so. Ito yung cell on to do that uh, so simply just uh, using this function merge. Uh, you will merge that from the geodata frame we want. Yung next uh, parameter is, is the date, uh, data frame or the second um, data frame object. Ang next is um, kung saan natin sila in, parang okay, join ano yung keys natin na kailangan ano, uh, tandaan. So, from our example, may ano tayo yung yung keys ng geodata frame natin as uh, the names of the the provinces na nandito siya sa attribute na to ADM to uh, underscore EN and from our uh, second data frame we have we have we also have then yung names nila pero nasa province yung yung header na column na yun so we can join them by um uh, uh then parang uh, isaad natin yung ano yung keys natin from both 
Three the queens. So from the left, ang ibig sabihin ng left is our G data frame and ang right from our other data frame. So that's why. So uh, simply doing that, we can uh, have our results as easy as this. So yung uh, count data frame natin, nagkaroon ng new spatial component. Uh, so meron na siyang polygon. Okay, so, ayan. And I will just, uh, um, I keep, always keep mentioning pandas kasi uh, yung mga operations ng GU pandas, you'll have the same from pandas. So, um, may ano tayo, may duplicate uh, uh, column. Ito yung province and ADM to underscore en we can drop them using the pandas function that drop so i am uh, okay yeah so again we can leverage from the powers of pandas so for example i want to know the mean value of this count so i am your uh, result uh, we just simply use the mean function um, so we can also subset our geodata frame based on conditional statements. Again, pandas and siya operation. So ang conditional statements lang naman ay parang, um, for example, we want to uh, know which provinces had zero participants. So ang syntax lang nito ay yung geodata frame and sa loob ng brackets ay lalagay natin yung uh, conditional statement. So, from the geodata frame under count, uh, which which count were zero. Ganyan. So, and, and uh, we assigned it to another geodata frame para di magdala yung ano natin, existing geodata frame. So I am um let's see kung sino si yung sino. So um so uh, up sa payao wala tayong participants. Shout out sa inyo. Baka gusto <laughs> niyo <Okay. laughs> So patan din nila. Okay. So yun tayo doro. So yan. So uh, what we did is to subset yung data frame. Uh, hinanap natin itong uh, uh, para nag-slice tayo from our data frame to get uh, what we uh, want to analyze. So, ayan. Uh, next is yung the, uh, next is I will talk about uh, reprojection. So, when we usually uh, work with geospatial data, we want to work in the projected coordinate system. So, um, di ba parang, kasi when, when we, sa ano kasi, sa, when we use the, yung uh, global coordinate system, uh, represented siya as 3D, and the units are usually in angular or degree form. Uh, Usually, we want them to be in meters or in distance form so that uh, pag gagawa tayo ng mga analysis, uh, we can uh, measure them na parang nasa ano lang, partition plane. So we can view the uh, current uh, CRS by, by this uh, syntax. So the geodata frame geometry at CRS. So right now, uh, ayun niya, nasaan siya, um, a global coordinate system, ito yung ano, um, WGGS, ay, EPSG for 326. Ayan. And to, con to reproject this, madali lang, kasi um, Geo Pandas provides us a way to reproject them easily by uh, just placing the 
the projection we want it. So uh, GPM, uh, I, I want it completely to be reprojected. So nilagay ko yung GTF parang dito. And uh, the function is to uh, to, uh, to CRS and place the projection. So let's see. Right so now, uh, na convert na natin siya sa EPSG, EP651. Uh, parang usually ito yung uh, binagamit sa mga uh, dito, bansa. <laughs> Some bounds na ito. Okay. So, yan. Uh, next ay ang geometric manipulations. Ang geometric manipulations ay ang mga operations na ginagawa natin sa existing shape uh, to make new shape. So, example nito ay ang centroid. Ang centroid ay inahanap niya yung uh, centroid ng mga polygon. So yung from polygon, it will make a, a point. So ay, ayan, from the administrative data natin, makita ito na yung mga uh, centroids natin from each provinces. So ayan. Another geometric manipulation is yung uh, na-mention kanina ng CRRP, yung buffer. Suppose we want to um, see or uh, make this point larger to uh, para uh, makita natin yung mga bagay within the radius of the point. So from point, it will become a polygon again na uh, define ng radius ng sinet natin. Ayan. So, uh, you might want to check other geometric manipulations as well. So, dito yung thing. Ang next is uh, set operations with overlay. So, uh, uh, to make analysis, users may want to create new shapes based on places where data sets overlap or don't overlap. And these operations are made available through the overlay function. Ito yung syntax niya. So overlay the geodata frame and the how method. So yung how or our, our method, uh, here is the methods. Uh, Ito yung mga usual na ano, overlays. Okay. So, going back. Uh, ito yung operations natin. So, first is yung intersection. Uh, uh, kinukuha nito yung ano, um, yung object which in which uh nag intersect yung kung saan nag intersect yung dalawang objects ang union naman ay parang um uh, inukuha niyo yung overall na object parang sum think sum yung ano na yung logical operation ng union yung symmetrical difference naman ay you can um uh, inukuha yung um uh, yung identical na meron sila at uh, sinusubtract. And difference is uh, different subtract from the uh, So, um, yung next natin, instead of instead of showing you how to perform perform this uh, operations, I nag ano ako, na gumawa ako ng simple exercise for us. So, uh, ang title nito ay uh, where, where to Build New Schools. Ang gagawin lang natin ay parang uh, we want to find suitable sites in Catanduanes to build new schools on the following criteria. So, dapat yung school natin per, kung saan tayo gagawa ng bagong school ay beyond 
five kilometer from an existing school. And our second criteria is that um, the school should be within one kilometer from a road. So, um, gumawa ko ng mga uh, data sets for this. Tapos, uh, uh, so kinuha ko sila sa OpenStreetMap. And uh, before I plug it in here, ni reproject ko na sila sa planar coordinate system. So first, uh, we want to re what we really want to do is uh, load yung data sets. So let's see our data. So ayon may uh, administrative boundary tayo ng katanduanes. Ito, ito yun. Um, next yung what other materials we need. Siyempre yung existing schools. So here's a point data of our schools, existing schools sa uh, Tatanduanes. Um, meron na, ano, um, you can place a parameter ng color kung gusto nyo pagawin ng color na ano, ng geometry, ng picture. Uh, okay. so, nakita nyo yung city ba? Ang um, next yung rules. So we also have a road shape file or GJSON file. Ito yung rules natin. So, ano ba? May, from my, can you, pwede ba kayo mag-chat kung paano ito isolve? May idea ba kayo kung paano ito isolve? Parang, how would you solve it kung kayo lang yung, um, yung special scientist? So, yun yung chat yun. So, ayan. So, kung ako to, uh, may following criteria style. A review pala. Beyond 5 kilometers. Tapos within 1 kilometer from here. Um, we learned kanina na may mga um, geometric manipulations on the existing data. Tapos you can do overlisting between two datas. So what I can do now, or, or kung ako yung mag-soil. So ang gagawin kong una ay to create a buffer sa rules. So ang function lang ay uh, roads.buffer. Tapos since na naka-ano na tayo, naka-planar coordinate system, can input them as is yung um, distance. So, a 1,000 is for 1 kilometer. Yung resultant image nito ay um, ayan. So, um, what we also did here is kinuha natin yung buffer and this should create a new GD topic, di ba? Parang kanina na ano natin, magkikreate siya ng um, bagong shapes. Pero what I did here was I, I I added another column na buffer. So, ayan. Kita naman, no? may geometry and buffer column. So, uh, ano na yun? Parang, um, what do you think of this? Kasi may dalawang ano na tayo. Spatial component. So, ano na lang naman siya. So, a geodata frame can contain uh, more uh, uh, geospatial component. Pero, isa lang yung siniset natin na active geometry. So, to do that, um uh, gawin natin is uh, i-call natin yung set geometry na function. So, ito lang yun. Set geometry and the uh, column name. So, let's look at our result. Ayan. So, yung mga lines natin naging polygon. So, ang ginawa nito for each point or vertice ng, ng line, uh, nag-create ng 
parang uh, distance of one kilometer or uh, yun yung radius actually so uh, uh, this makes the line parang two kilometer na yung width ayun so again ito yung ano natin result data so uh, what I want to do next is um since yung data natin is um marami so you can see na ano, um sa preview natin na marami siyang features so each row represents one feature ang um, gusto kong gawin next is to like um uh, create a data set wherein uh, isa na lang siya so that I, I want to represent it na lang uh, single feature or single uh, shape so uh, ang gagawin ko ay ang uh, gagamitin ko yung dissolve function so ang uh, what does this do? What it does is to get the uh, union ng lot ng geometry within the single uh, geodata plane. So, iba pa siya sa overlay since it's since it deals with the uh, since it deals with the single uh, geospatial data. Hindi siya operation between two two objects or two geodata plane. So, ayan. So, uh, ginawa ko yung ginawa ko uh, nagset ako ng new variable codes yun at ginawa ko yung uh, geodata plane natin na rules and yung function na dissolve. So, ang result ng dissolve is it will look like this. So, from a single uh, from multiple features ng uh, ng geodata plane isa na lang siya isang buong uh, feature so ang uh, next kong gustong gawin since sinanap natin yung mga suitable sites ay cut ko yung ano cut ko na yung uh, administrative uh, boundary kasi may mga existing roads tayo na parang nasa labas ng boundary. So, again, this data is from OpenStreetMap. So, it's open and everyone can contribute. Yes, may mga ano. Um, so, I don't know if may alam siya. May So, ang gagawin ko ay um, to get the intersection. So, uh, ang intersection ay pinukuha yung intersect ng dalawang data. So, our boundary data. Kung uh, boundary data, let me show you ulit. Ito. Tapos, uh, ito. So, ang result niya ay yung shape na nag-exist sa both both and uh, both objects in yung intersection so we have dealt with ano uh, with we have dealt with pyramids ang sunod ay yung school so we have another uh criteria din ba yung schools dapat dapat beyond 5 kilometers so what i would do next again is to create a buffer okay. Tapos yun, uh, sinabi natin na we can create another uh, column then set it as the active geometry buffer. So, ito yung ano natin, uh, buffered existing schools. So, ayun. So, may radius siyang 5 kilometers. Ang next natin ay can we already find the suitable sites? I think uh, pwede na. So, ang um, next natin ay kunin yung suitable sites. 
So, ano ba yung ano? Uh, sa tingin nyo yung tamang uh, operation to do that? So, when we, ano, kailangan kong, uh, syempre, beyond the school, so, and may existing suitable site style na from the road. So, what I want to do is to get the difference of the of the two geometries or shapes. So I uh, and so ito call ko lang ulit. So we have the function overlay nag set tayo ng bagong GOD that we called suitable sites. And katanduan is intersection is the uh geodata frame natin we're in kinuha natin yung intersection ng roads and the administrative boundary tapos yung overlay function ang uh, lagay ko na since yung a kukun, ima minus natin or kukunin yung difference with is yung school and the, the method difference so let's see that so ayun so from uh, Nagamit tayo ng ano, uh, two overlays and uh, we have uh, demonstrated kung paano siya magiging helpful. So, um, ayun. So, um, disclaimer, walang, walang basis yung ano yung one kilometer uh, with beyond and within. So, ano lang siya. Uh, just, uh, I, want, I just wanted to show you kung paano siya kadali gamitin. So yan, ito yung result natin. So uh, 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 ano pa? We can also ano um we can compute yung area nito. So let's find out kung ilan pa yung ano natin suitable area. So pra, meron uh, method yung geopandas uh, that area to uh, to compute the total area and since since ano nga tayo um we use planar coordinate system naka meters na yung ano result natin so um based on the calculation so meron pa tayo um about 411 square kilometer <laughs> yeah. so yan i think ano yun, ang full no just by uh, two operations na gawa natin yun. Uh, and next is um, final na um, visualizing data. So, we can visualize data to show variations of pattern and usually yung ginagawa natin to visualize data is called uh, for a flat map. So, paki ako. So in our ano, uh, let's recycle our data. Uh, kunin ko ulit yung ano natin, yung provinces. We're in my uh, count tayo ng, ano, ng participants. So kinuha ko ulit yung sa GDF.10. And to visualize this, I want to, um, I want to show the percentage kung saan galing yung mga participants natin. So, instead of count, um, I want to know the percent. Ano? So, from our uh, geodata frame, we can call the, from our, the column, so, we will assign total. Tapos, uh, kunin natin yung column from our geodata frame. So, ito yung count and get the sum. So, let's look back. So, may 1,025 uh, registrants on but it's not the latest. May bag na number. So, yan. Um, sa geodata frame, like data frames or pandas data frame, you can do math easily. So, so I want to add a new column called percentage and uh, result siya ng, uh, when we uh, when we divide 
the count for each uh, picture over the total and uh, multiply it by 100. So uh, we can see now the, uh, the we have any column for that um, operation or um, arithmetic. So, yeah. Um, uh, the going down natin ay to use the uh, uh, visualization tool natin. So, dalawa lang naman di ba? Yung that explore and that plot. So, sa, since may ano na tayo, <clears throat> dalawang uh, columns na nagra-represent ng uh, numbers, uh, we can set the column we want we want to visualize so yan uh nagay ko siya as parameter column percentage ang cmap ito ay mga color patterns yan naman so i think uh, you can search for it sa uh, matplotlib so ano lang naman to yellow orange red uh, yellow as the lowest and red yung as the highest Tapos, hindi ba ko lang yung opacity? So, let's look at it. So, ayan. So, nangingibabaw yung ano, uh, taga, mga met taga Metro Manila and with 36%. And yung iba nga ay ano, um, less than 1% lang. So, mga 3%, 5%. Ito yung ano, result natin from that operation. So, ayan. So, um, we can also use quantiles para i-lessen yung ano, uh, color variation. Kasi, kasi if you would notice, parang uh, marami yung steps ng color dito sa ano, 0 to 24. So, um, ang quantiles is used to uh, ayun nga, show lesser variation uh, lesser variation tapos parang it deceives us to show rankings ayun so nito na itsura so yung matataas pang we put 10 to 37 percent. We have only one folder. Ito yung red. Tapos yung iba. So other than explore, we have the dot plot function. So, so alas same lang ng parameters. We can also set the axis width of para lang kita natin. So yung plot niya ay as sinabi ko kanina, ay isang image. So, we can save this image if we want to. So, ayun. Ay ayun yung presentation ko. And to summarize, so, ang G a GeoPandas is a powerful tool, tool to repeat geospatial data in Python. Uh, next, ang GeoData frame ay ano lang, tabular data na combination of a geometry and other with plus yung other attributes ng data. And third, you can leverage from pandas to do data manipulation, such as joining two data frames. Fourth, you can perform analysis through uh, geometric manipulations and overlays. Lastly, you can visualize data in Colab using the dot explore function and the dot plot function. So where can we go from here? I, I really suggest learning pandas. Parang dun ako nag uh, umpisa. Um, I can still remember in 2018, parang um, <clears throat> nag offer yung DOST ng Coursera. Tapos parang uh, buzzword talaga yung data science dun. And just by learning pandas, parang nag ano na talaga, nag shift yung career ko. Ganun. Uh, second, explore other data sets and play with it. So, for example, you can play with our um, simple exercise. 
maybe may data kayo uh, na pwedeng dagdag. For example, um, may data kayo kung saan binabaha. So, place the schools inside dun sa binaba. Kasi ganun naman you should. Ate, uh, joke lang. Pero ano, uh, just play with data. You know? And third is learn from other resources. So, ito yung references ko. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Uh, that's our first tutorial. Um, thank you for the intro to GeoPandas. So we know na mahirap sundan yung notebook habang nakikinig and baka may lines din na magka-error, no? But don't worry. Just like in the previous session, you can try to run the notebook later or in your free time. And if you encounter a problem while doing the activity, you can also use the CCAP Discord so we can guide you. We also encourage our participants to have discussions, so please feel free to answer the questions if you know the answers to them. So I can see na marami po tayong questions. Uh, mamaya po, uh, let's address them sa Q&A. So before we proceed to the last lecture, let's now have the quiz. Uh, let's call on Draylen to be the quiz master. Hi, Hi. again. Hi, ma'am. Sorry for the trouble kanina, so let's do it. Uh, wait, share ko na yung tamang link. So, ah, oh wait, I think I share this. Ano, wait lang po ah, sound. So, ayun. Um, access to nyo po. Tayo nyo po access ulit yung www.mnc.com and then the link uh, on the chat box. So, 57-33-75 for scan the QR code. Yeah. Okay, so wait lang po natin mag-200. Then we'll start. So I hope uh, may energy pa po tayo. <laughs> so let's go. Alright, may mga gusto pa po bang pumasok. Sige, bigyan natin sila ng 2 minutes. 310, start po tayong 310. Baka may gusto pang pumasok. One minute. Yung again, top three uh, players po. Paki-screenshot mamaya din. Paki-email po sa sikap at kisa.gov.ph or to claim your prize. Uh, may munti po tayong prize. Ready? Ready, players? So, 
yeah, let's start. For our first question, so answer fast to get more points. What is a geographic data type where data is stored as a collection of points, lines, or polygons along with attribute data? Time's up. Yep, the correct answer is vector. Alright. Let's see our leaderboard. We have our, we have Mr. James Chavez, it's the fastest. So, next. What type of feature is represented by a single X and Y location? Is it the polygon, point, or a line? A line. Correct answer is point. Alright. Let's see. Okay, uh, next question. What type of thing is represented by at least two vertices and are connected? Polygon, point, or a line? So, ayan, tingnan natin kung sino ang nanalo. Sa round na to, 183 ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Ah, wala pa palang leaderboard. Medyo pa-suspense ata ngayon. One type of feature is represented by at least three vertices that are connected and closed. Polygon, point, or a line. I'm up. Ayun! Ang daming pumama. 225. Grabe, ang gagaling nyo, guys. Ay, ito na ang ating leaderboard. Nawala po kanina yung top 1 natin. Napalitan na si Sir Rico. Followed by Mr. Kyle Laure Laurel and in the third place, Miss Patricia Pangatuman. Alright, marami pa po tayong mga questions. So, galingan you guys. Kaya niyan. Tunod, next question. A blank is a system used to define a specific map projection. Tinuro ata yan kanina. So, <laughs> alam nyo yan guys. Blue. Coordinate Reference System, GIS, or Cartesian Plane. Ako guys, gagalitan kayo ng mga professor niyo pag nagkamali kayo dito guys. Ayun na nga, 177 got the correct answer. Nakumpatay kayo sa prof niyo yung mga sumagot ng mali. So, tingnan natin ang ating leaderboard. At eto na nga, Si Sir Rico pa rin ang nangunguna with a 4,887 points pero hindi, hindi yan ma mahirap habulin. Miss, Trish, Miss Patricia, kaya kaya nyo pa yan. So next uh, question, which is not a vector data file format? Ay, alam na alam nyo to guys. I'm so sure of it. Shape file. GUJSON or GUTIFF Alam na alam nyo yan guys Kita nyo, alam na alam nyo nga 139 got the correct answer which is GUTIFF So let's see Ito na po si Mr. Rico pa rin talaga nang umuna Ah hindi, tingnan natin Nagbalik ang Ah, wala talaga pong galawan ng ating leaderboard. Medyo may konti lang na difference, pero ah, ang gagaling talaga nila. Mga Lodi. What does G stands for in GIS? Ay, naku guys! Pabilisan sumagot! Alam na alam niya yan. Globe, geoscience, geographic, or geology. 
pabilisan na lang yan guys so, pabilisan rin ang internet kaya malas kapag mabagal ang inyong internet pero okay lang yan alam nyo na po sa mga susunod na session kailangan nyo ng mabilis na internet kaya kung nakadita lang kayo umakit na kayo sa bubong uh, be careful lang baka kayo malaglag ayan kung talagang competitive kayo kaya nyo abulin si Sir Rico pero mukhang naka PLDT siya ah joke sorry mas mabilis ata daw si Converge ay hindi rin ay sorry sorry so ayan malapit na tayo guys ilang questions na lang to ilawa ata so a geographic data type where they may store the sub grid of regularly sized pixels containing information medyo mahaba yung tanong medyo mahirap galingan nyo na lang tumamba Joke lang. <laughs> alam ko guys, magigilin kayo at alam niya. Ayan na. Ayan na nga, raster. O, oh, diba? Napakagaling talaga. Hindi pa ata ito tinuturo ngayong araw, pero nakuha niyo pa rin. Oh my God. You're so great. Ayun. Si Sir Rico pa rin nata talaga ang nangunguna. Alright, we have a champion with a whopping 7,788 points. Congratulations to you, Sir Rico. So, pakisend na lang po ang ating uh, mga result sa sikapadresa.gov.ph. Congratulations to all the winners. Ayun, thank you. All right, thank you for that very energetic quiz, Jay. <laughs> so congratulations to Rico, Sir Alan, and Ma'am Rafaela. So I hope you had fun. Thank you to everyone who participated. So yung top three na binanggit ko, congratulations. Please wait for your prizes and screenshot. So we will now move on to our last uh, topic for today. So to further discuss where we can access data, Let's call none other than Jalen again. Hi, Jay. Go ulit. Ay, ako na pala ulit. Take it away. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, medyo, ano, uh, dun sa, na, sinasaniban pa rin ako ng pagiging game master. Pero, <laughs> ayun. So, guys, uh, good afternoon again. Uh, sana na energize kayo kahit makano dun sa ating games. So, mara. <laughs> So, uh, sa mga susunod pang session, guys, yung mga gusto pang sumali or mag-participate, so, alam nyo na na dapat medyo mabilis ang inyong internet. <laughs> so, ayun. Uh, so, let's start uh, our discussion. I mean, our last ano na pala, last presentation na po pala ako. At medyo mabilis lang naman ito. Para rin ma-address yung mga questions natin kasi medyo nagpa-pile up na pala. So, Yeah, so we have can have more time sa sa Q&A. So wait lang po. Medyo ingay. <laughs> Present ko lang po yung ano, yung presentation. Ah, uh, so Ah, uh, pe-present ko lang po yung mga geospatial data sources na kung saan ah uh, pwedeng nating uh, makuha ito ng libre. Yung mga data sets na pwedeng nating uh, paglaruan or pwedeng nating gamitin sa ating research or sa ating mga uh, projects or ayun, anything na geospatial. So basically uh throughout this data camp Uh, especially rin po dun sa mga mag, gustong mag-participate sa presentation ng papers nila or you have certain idea na gusto nyong i-present at the end of the data. So in combination na po yun ng lahat ng lectures, so application ng lectures and then everything na, na pwede nang ma-apply yung mga naging lectures. So you need data. So Nandito pa para siguro bigyan kayo ng tips or siguro ipakilala kayo dun sa mga ibang platforms na 
pwede nating mapagkunan ng data for free. So, I think maraming beginners rin and then marami din pong experience uh, participants. So, medyo mal konti lang list. So, maybe we can share sa Discord server then later or in the following days kung saan pa tayo pwedeng makakuha ng a uh, specific type of data kasi syempre may i-drive din tayo ng requirements at hindi na rin namin kayang i-cover lahat. And so medyo yung i-define lang rin natin yung scope ng presentation. Uh, uh what I will show you lang po is yung mga platforms and how to access them and basically how to download. Pero hindi po siya kasi comprehensive uh yung maybe Maybe nag-expect kayo na paano siya pa i-upload sa notebook or i ano. So, maybe we can have a different session or during our drop-in hours na lang or in Discord. So, maybe with the help of our experts. So, right, sikap is a community so we can help each other. So, ayun, let's uh, begin. The first on the list is the Humanitarian Data Exchange or the HDX. So this platform uh, is an open platform for sharing uh, sharing data across crisis and organizations. It was launched in July 2014 with the goal uh, to make humanitarian data easy to find and use for analysis. The HDX collection of data sets has been accessed by users in over 200 countries and territories. So. Sneak peek sa HDX, uh, napaka-straightforward kung mag-download ng data dito since you can just uh, pick a, a, a topic or like a subject in the in their search bar and then uh, it will give you a result. Uh, pero medyo uh, it will depend on your query kasi hindi lahat uh, pare-pareho ng format. So for example, this one, uh, Philippine Health Sites, and then the Philippine Population Density for 400 million each three hexagon. So, uh, iba-ibang format siya at hindi lahat pare-pareho din yung format. So, may GUDSON, CSV, or shapefiles. So, ayun. Uh, this HDX uh, platform din, uh, you can just uh, put filters and then by uh, filter it by location or formats then of course so ayan you can explore it later well, uh, and, and then maybe sa kung may mga express na rin po na nakagamit ng itong HDX or ayan maybe we can create a discord channel rin na about the parang topics natin yung mga data sets kasi syempre may may kanya-kanya talaga tayong ano eh parang specific uh, na hinahanap. So, maybe we can share our resources rin. And share din po namin kung ano yung meron sa, sa org natin. So, yun. The next is the Open Street Map. Uh, so, or OSM. It is built by a community of mappers. Uh, contributors use aerial imagery, GPS devices, and low-tech field maps to verify that OSM is accurate. OSM is open data. You are free to use it for any purpose as long as you credit OpenStreetMap and its um, uh, contributors. So, ah, oh, wait. Sorry. Ayan, so, ito yung kaninang uh, kasamas dun sa example ni Nico. And, and marami, I mean, siguro, uh, marami na rin sa atin yung, yung uh, nakita to si OpenStreetMap. So, as you all know, uh, si OSM po is parang ano siya, di ba? Parang Wikipedia ng ano, na, ng database ng maps. So, we can uh, submit an edit to a certain location or like add data on that and then it will automatically reflect after validation pala uh, dun sa mga ibang sources or kung saan natin ginagamit si OSM. So sneak peek again. So this is what the edit map version. I mean the edit map uh, feature of the OSM. So as you can see, the there are road networks, um, the buildings, and then the, there are nodes and tags. So lahat po nito is uh, editable, and then 
uh, medyo ano lang uh, actually for me it medyo double edged sword din si OSM since it is like wikipedia so anyone can edit something uh, pero ay meron naman po pala uh, mga validation na, na, na ginagawa for uh, different places pero hindi lahat so may mga nagbabantay rin pala halimbawa may inedit ka pong pangalan ng establishment uh, ayan so hindi agad-agad uh, kumbaga pwede ma-reject yung edit no di ba kung mali naman talaga yung gusto mong ilagay pero for example uh, gaya namin dito sa Daet Camarines Norte uh, meron po dito kasi mga anim street so nagtry ako maglagay ng mga pangalan pangalanan yung mga street na alam kong ayun so almost real time na approve yung yung changes so ang galing kasi uh, ang mag- ang kagandahan to is updated na agad dun sa mga base map na gumaga na sa mga base map ni OSM yung ano yung edits na ginawa natin and then another topic kasi meron talaga pong ano eh kumbaga si OSM napaka powerful niya uh, usually yung data na nanggagaling dito is easily pwede mong ma-export so may mga ways kasi dito sa web medyo uh, ano lang eh diba? pwede mong i-export siya as CSV or on, I think not sure lang ako dun sa iba pang uh, format pero meron din sa sa QGIS na mga plugins na nagsusupport dito sa OpenStreetMap wherein those plugins ma uh, pwede ka lang mag-query doon so ayun pwede mo na ma-extract doon yung data so in the following day siguro um or kasi kapag medyo may actual na so maybe we can all help each other na lang to ano to to upload the data on our notebook. So just ask, uh, drop the questions in the Discord so we can do our best to answer them uh, one by one. So, ayun. Tulungan na lang po tayo. Then, ayun. Okay na po tayo sa OSM. So let's move on to Geoportal PH. So Geoportal PH uh, is used to find access to geospatial data and services. It's project uh, by DNR Namria. And then release and geospatial data related to the Philippines, so as well as it could include COVID-19 cases, land like use maps, hazard maps, and much more. So users can download data depending on restrictions. Other data can be requested through the electronic freedom of information if it's not available in the GEO portal. So it's also a GEO server which can serve geospatial software clients such as QGIS also. So med Medyo ano lang po ngayon si Geoportal, medyo ano, uh, hindi po, nag-try po kami mag-download ng data but medyo hindi siya, hindi kami inalaw mag-download and makapag-register as of now. Pero there are, may mga nakagamit na rin po kasi nito before sa mga teammates namin and then nakakapag-download talaga dito dati daw ng data. So hindi namin alam lang yung reason ngayon bakit uh, restricted siya. So, this is a government uh, project, led project. So, uh, may, ang kagandahan po dito kasi may mga uh, closely tied siya dun sa mga ibang depa, ano, agencies ng government. So, uh, we can use this para for close monitoring ng mga uh, different aspects ng, ano, uh, ng Philippines. So, this data is all focused on the Philippines. So, kung may mga studies or researches kayo na related or need nyo ng mga data about the Philippines, so this one could be a help. So, that's it. Uh, yun lang po. Uh, as I said earlier, we can, uh, ano, we can uh, just uh, help each other in Discord. So, kasi marami po tayo siguradong uh, mga ginagamit rin ibang tools. So, we can share it to beginners also and also of course sa students natin na curious kung paano mag-download and upload ng data dun sa notebooks or dun sa ibang software na ginagamit natin para maka mapaglaruan natin or magamit sa researches natin. So ayun po, thank you and thank you very much. So proceed na tayo po rin sa 
Gen 3. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that presentation, Ray. Um, and thanks as well to RK Aranat and Nico Pante for their presentations earlier. Um, so let's now move on to our Q&A. May I ask all the presenters to turn their cameras on? Okay, RK, Nico, and Ray, please. All right. So... Let's start with the questions. Medyo marami, no? Pero marami naman tayong time din. So for the first few questions, medyo may mga redundant or same same na tinatanong. This is for RK. So I think nasagot na rin ito sa chat. But uh, ang question nila is, ano daw yung software na gamit mo for the demo earlier? Hi, hi, Tint. So, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, yung gamit ko pala kanina na software to demonstrate yung GeoJSON is ano, uh, GeoJSON.io siya. So it's a web app, so you don't have to install anything diretsyo diretsyo lang. And I think may tanong pala kanina ng anonymous na sagutin ko na lang din, are we going to use QGIS po? So uh, yun, unfortunately, we're not going to use QGIS, so we'll be focusing mostly on Python kasi for this data camp. So yun. Thank you, Tin. Alright, thank you. The next question... Um, from this is from Jetro David. Um, this is for RK as well. So, how do you export building footprints as polygon shape file? So, chat na ba yun? No question. Uh, I think sa chat siya. Zoom chat, uh, yes. So yung, kung, kung yung question is sa uh, geojson.io, uh, share ka na yung screen ko. Kung sa geojson.io siya, um, may save button siya sa gilid, yung dito. So you can export it uh, as shapefile or whatever kung may nagawa ka ng mga data. So I, I think baka yun yung question. Yes, I think. Uh, yun nga yung question. Thank you for the answer, RK. Um, another question for you is from Ryan Basina. So, aside from tracing the line or polyline, can we automatically extract, say, the road network or reverse system using the OSM base map? Uh, yeah, yung sa OSM, kung o, we're, if we're talking about OSM, naka ano talaga yung data nila. Uh, may database talaga sila. So, yan. Sa Geofabric, if you want to extract yung specific, may API sila, which is yung overpass API, kung, kung subset, subset lang, or specific types. Unfortunately, out of scope siya. Maybe we can discuss it sa Discord. But if you want yung entire Philippines, for example, so meron silang download uh, site. I mean, one of the services, uh, yung OpenStreetMap kasi, di ba, permissive yung data license na. So there are businesses built around it. One of them is uh, Geofabric. Tapos yung ginagawa nila, uh, ini-extract nila yung periodically, yung data, may extract sila. So you can download it as shape file. So paste ko na lang dito yung link. So nasa geofabric.de siya. So yun, uh, wait, share ko na lang din yung screen para makita niya. Kita ba? Uh, tama ba? In yes, kita lang. So, so may link dito. So, maki makukuha mo actually from other countries. So, yung sa Philippines. Eh, ito. So, may zip file siya or OSM export. So, you can download it. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Um, next question is... Uh, this is for you, RK, again. Uh, is there an option to do vector operations in GeoJSON and kung pwedeng collaborative ang uh, pag-input sa isang map project? Ah, hello. Sorry. I, th I think it's uh, essential na pala. Kasi sinabay ko kanina yung GeoJSON at GeoJSON.io discussion. So, si GeoJSON is, is ano lang siya kasi? It's just a file format. So parang equivalent siya sa shapefile. 
So, pag naload mo na siya sa GIS or sa, say, kay Jopandas, like yung ginawa ni Nico kanina, you can do all these ano, operations na. So, si GeoJSON is container lang talaga siya ng data. As for the second question, which is collaborative, yung pag-input, I'm not, matagal na ako hindi nag-GIS actually. So, I'm not sure. I'm assuming meron na sa, say, kung nag-gumagamit kayo ng ArcGIS, uh, maka meron. May nakita din akong bago ngayon na kung GeoJSON specific, I think it's called uh, placemark.io. Parang ganun yung buong uh, binibenta nila may ano siya, GeoJSON. Tapos parang anyway, modern siya for web dev people. Kaya lang ano siya, uh, paid nga lang siya. So, yung gumawa ng placemark actually is the person who made yung GeoJSON then that I owe. Oh, hindi pala ito endorsement. <laughs> so, just saying, uh, yun yung pinakamalapit na naisip ko. Baka yung iba may alam na yung mga online GIS siguro, but please yun yung alam ko. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, tuloy na natin no? for, our, for, our, for you then yung question na next. So, using data from GeoJSON, ano-ano na po yung mga nagawa yung analysis out, oh, out from different data na na-extract nyo? So sabi niya, I'm not familiar with this application po kasi I think giving me some idea kung ano po yung use ng particular data for G um, from GeoJSON is pagiging helpful para mag-grasp ko yung function or purpose nito. That's from Rosanil. Mm, so, ayun, uh, like, like na-mention ko kanina yung GeoJSON kasi uh, it's just uh, data format. So kung ano yung magagawa nyo with shapefile, it's, it's more or less the same. So, Personally, at least I feel sudden we just started. We haven't really used it. We used it dito lang sa data camp. Uh, kasi siya is, it's one of the simpler uh, data formats. But yung mga nagawa ko at least mga personal projects, more of, ano siya, more of for visualization. So, pero yun, if you can do it with a shape file, you, you can do it with GeoJSON. Alright. Thanks. Um, Another question is, may code ba kayo for automation ng pag-extract ng coordinates for the list of addresses? So. Parang na-ano na din ako nito. Parang someone asked kung mayroon bang ganito ang program. So, unfortunately, hmm. parang wala akong makita. Hmm. Pero uh, what I know is my paid uh, peer yung Google wherein uh, pwede mo ma-extract yung longitude and latitude uh, given na dapat uh, present yung location sa Google map. Uh, hello, if, if I may add sa answer ni Nico. Ah, ni Nico. So uh, I checked. Medyo, malaki kasi yung GeoPandas. Marami siyang functions. I check So, meron siyang function dito. I think yung gusto ni... Eh, ano no? So, yung... If I understand correctly, yung gusto ni... Yeah, Yan Paul is given an address. So, text siya. Input niya yan. Tapos, output is a coordinate. A lot long pair. So, a lot, so that, that process is uh, called geocoding. So, tapos si GeoPandas, may geocoding siya na... Uh, function pero however ano siya uh, yung yung default niya na gamit is yung nominatim which is based sa open street map so but yeah we, you can use geopandas for this uh, and yun nga lang like like Nico yung uh, di ba kasi text medyo vague yung text tas ko convert mo siya sa lat long so yung yung quality ng ganong operation it depends really sa quality din ng database mo and and like Nico said yung mga Mas maganda yung mga paid, yung mga Google, mga Microsoft. You know? Pero if you just want to use Geopandas, you can use Geopandas, yung geocoding niya na library. Ay na function. May add-on nga lang siya. Like, di ba naalala nyo, nag-install si Nico kanina ng mga Shapely, mga ganun, etc. If you want to use geocoding sa Geopandas, may additional ano siya, which is uh, GeoPy, if I'm not mistaken. So, but you can use Geopandas for it. Pero kung yung tanong is may existing code kami, we, we haven't really done it yet. But you can use your plan. Alright, thank you for that answer. Um, 
for the next question, uh, there are many na nagtatanong uh, nung data no, na nasa G-Drive. Kaya hindi ma-run dun sa code. So, um, this is from Luther Villapuz. So, I think na-answer na rin sa chat. Pero, Nico, would you like to expand on it? Uh, ayan. Uh, I-update ko na lang yung notebook to include the link. Tapos, share ko ulit sa... Um, if you want, i-update ko yung calendar yung type para sa link ng materials natin for today's session. All right. Thank you. So everyone, uh, ma-access nyo dun sa link na i-extend uh, or i-paste nyo ko later on yung data. All right. Uh, next question. So are there any way to convert Shape files to GeoJSON, especially when you're exporting your GeoPandas work to React, Leaflet, or for web visualization purposes. Uh, yes. So aside from reading the reading different views, actually format, pwede mo siyang basa and then convert it to another format. So, uh, for example, shape file to GeoJSON. Uh, you can do that with GeoPandas. Okay, thank you. Tapos, uh, there's a question here from Jay Lachika, LG of Land. Um, meron po bang list of functions? That's for you, Nico. Uh, for the list of functions, I think uh, it would be better if you can refer to sa, sa documentation of GeoPandas. Uh, aside sa list parang may comprehensive uh, na details sila kung paano gamitin yung functions pati na rin yung mga need ninyong parameters. So I think nilink na yung CRRT yung, ano, yung documentation. Please refer to that. Alright. Thank you. Uh, here's another question regarding shape files and geojson files. So th this is from Ronald Zhang. How is shape file similar and different from geojson files? So are there any file or file formats of geospatial data that we should be familiar with? So, oh, uh, so you uh, First, ano, um, similar siya since may ano, um, geospatial component and uh, different sila in, uh, in practical uses din. So makita natin kanina, um, shapefile is composed of actually maraming format, uh, maraming data files. So iba pa yung file for the database iba pa yung file for the shapes pero uh, intersection uh, ano sila uh, isang set yung shape file yung yung gjson file is a single file also um, yung gjson file can actually be a pwede mo siyang uh, landing page kumbaga pwede mo siyang iset as a landing page sa isang site Tapos yun na yung return na ano, file. Katulad ng pag-read natin dun sa mga files natin. I, I didn't have the file stored sa drive, pero nasa, ano siya, nasa link. And uh, to add din sa kay uh, Nico, I think mostly, um, kung if you're, go, if you're going to do web stuff, like, go, yung, uh, data mo is for online visualization. Mas maganda yung uh, GeoPandas. Ay, Japan. Yung GeoJSON for that. Kasi ni, uh, it's just JSON. Ma Makakol mo siya from React, from Mapbox, or kung ano man yung web uh, tools mo. Yung shapefile kasi, at saka mas compact yung GeoJSON, di ba? As Miko said, isang file lang siya. Si Geo, ay si shapefile, ano siya, tatlong files, uh, three or four files talaga siya. It's not really made for that. Tapos, uh, some other nuances pala si shape file kung may may limitations siya like yung kung yung shape file mo ay point kasi sa example yung point data mo it dapat dapat homogeneous siya so points lang lahat or 
uh, polygons ng lahat or lines ng lahat. So mag, magkakaroon ka ng hiwa-hiwalay na files kung ganun, kung iba-iba yung data types mo. Sa GeoJSON pwede kang maghalo-halo doon. And ayun, pero I think mo, yun yung main divide usually. Uh, GeoJSON is mostly uh, better for web stuff at kung if you're going to do it locally, uh, most people prefer yung shape but you can just uh, you can also use uh, GeoJSON for All right, thank you. Um, next question is, um, would it be possible to extract location data in OpenStreetMap, such as finding the locations of schools in a certain area? I uh, saw so OpenStreetMap, my uh, overpass uh, API sila. Though I'm not sorry, I'm not really that familiar with it, but you can query it done. So you like you can find all schools or all us or may ano ka pa? May mga filters ka pa like all private schools, public schools, whatever. So database naman talaga siya, so you can do that. So balik na lang naman kasi siguro sa actual implementation. I think walang gumagawa sa amin yun ngayon. Okay. Mas madali sa sa GIS. I oh, actually QG is a QG sometimes. Yes. So let's proceed to the next question. Uh, I think this one is for Nico. This is from John William. Um, he's asking kung ano daw yung name ng Coursera course na binanggit mo kanina uh, sa end ng presentation. Mata, matagal na yun. Pero ano yun? Um, <laughs> 2018, para nag-offer um, yung DOST. So, yung name ng Coursera course is Applied Data Science with Python Specialization. So, ang um, component nito ay yung basics ng Python, pag-plot chart ng mga data using Pandas, tapos uh, in the end, parang may applied machine learning nata, I think. So, very fun yun. I don't know if course um DOST is still offering kasi parang may mga programs na rin sila for example yung um, um Spartan for data science um so na remember ko nung ano yung start ng pandemic uh, nung 2020 parang nag um sila um nagbigay talaga ng maraming uh, offerings for sale Sayang, sayang. Yes, actually, naalala ko, nag-take din ako ng ilang courses dun eh. At, so, ay, isama ko na rin dito related yung question. No? Can you recommend any online courses paid or free? So, I think nasagot naman na. Pero, um, dagdag ko na lang din. Minsan, nagtitingin lang din ako sa Coursera. Lalo na kapag may mga, yung email accounts nyo ay university accounts. Usually, may mga, may times na free makukuha mo yung course for free, matitik mo yung course for free kapag university accounts yung gamit nyo. Uh, meron din sa, minsan meron din sa Google. Um, uh, check na lang. Uh, usually, nakikita ko lang din siya sa pag pinapost sa mga groups. So, ayun. Uh, very helpful naman din. Kahit mga free, free courses lang sila. So, ayun. Hopefully, that answers those questions. Uh, next question, um, example ng advantage ng GeoPandas slash Python versus other QGIS, ArcGIS, or other traditional GIS software. Siguro, um, uh, depends on these cases. So, as uh, I mentioned as, uh, sa opening, sa intro ko, para uh, ginagamit namin yung ano, uh, Python and GeoPandas para mapabilis yung processes namin since uh, um, since yung mga data will undergo the same process meaning hindi na kailangan parate na ano, manual analysis from a person so napapadali yung workflow na ano, uh, parang, uh, when a data is received uh, process again, then 
yung resulting data makikita natin mo in easy Yes, kumbaga pwede siyang gawin parang automation na rin ng ano no work na hindi mo na iisa-isahin and or uh, and uh, defined na yung process then no uh, so gagawin din sa image or sa data. So yeah. Or I, if I may add yung ano din, uh, if you're going to run yung code sa headless environment, by headless I mean yung walang UI sa mga servers usually. So hindi naman, hindi ka nga maglalagay doon ng GIS. So mas maganda yun yung view pandas for that. Yung mga servers lang na walang ano, desktop environment. Alright. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for those answers. Uh, next is um, it's a question from Alan Daen. Is it possible to create VM using GeoJSON using Python like in QGIS? Um, VM is another type of geospatial data. And I think for next section, so it's a raster data in VM. And uh, pwede siya mabasa using another tool uh, which we will teach next week. Uh, GeoJSON, hindi siya GeoJSON kasi uh, I mentioned hindi siya vector data. So GeoJSON is for vector data. Ay, ay, yeah. to, to, tama si uh, Nico. To, to add to Nico, baka Pero pwedeng ano, yung, say, yung input points mo, di ba usually we make DMs from point uh, measurements. So, pwedeng ah, yung point, ah. yung point input mo is JJSON. Oh. Pero pag, mm -hmm. ano, magawin mo na siyang GeoTIF or some other. I'm not sure, nagawa mo na ba, Miko, for Geopandas? Hindi pa. Hindi pa. Oh, I think baka may transformation kang gagawin. Oh, sorry, if you feed mo siya sa... Vector to, uh, uh, raster to vector. Uh, so, rasterio siguro sa next, the next session natin. Uh, let's try to do that uh, next week. Okay, thank you for those answers. Um, what are your thoughts in performing geospatial analysis with geospatial data in different time? Uh, so, do I need all data to occur in the same year? I'm not so sure about that question, but we could can you answer it? If not, let's ask a clarification from Sir Ronald. Ronald Zhang. I'll repeat the question. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts in performing geospatial analysis with geospatial data in different time? Do I need all data occur to occur in the same year? you have different data tapos yung for example yung land use data mo uh, was taken last year tapos may for example may heat map ka ang temperature uh, yun po ginagawa naman talaga yung sa analysis ng geostatial data Alright. I hope that answers may mga, your ano question. Do, may mga use cases. Uh -huh. Ay, saka depende rin kung ano gusto niyang malaman. I guess kung gusto niyang multi-year analysis. May follow-up question to add sir. Like merging uh -huh. data from different sources in different time. Uh, baka time series analysis ni Nico. Ah, uh, yes. So, do you, so vector yung meron? Sa so, pandas kasi may ganun eh, may time series na analysis. So, at least, as, as long as may time field, mm. that, that should be possible. Okay. Okay. So, I hope that answers that for Ronald. Uh, let's proceed to another question. Uh, I've been exploring GRASS GIS and was unable to find sources for satellite maps like in 
GeoJSON. So yun, yung nakikita ko lang po kasi available is yung map box suite. Do you know any sources for satellite map for GIS? Okay. <laughs> I think uh, kung satellite data siya uh, hindi, hindi talaga siya kaya okay, medyo na-confuse ako yung mapbox streets base map din kasi yun eh um, may, may clarify pwede magpa-clarify din <laughs> saan pa lang Go ahead. That's oh. a question from Hiponia. Mm. Um, Kasi kung satellite you... data, that would be raster na siya. No. Uh, maybe you could, uh, ano na lang, co comment your uh, <clears throat> message ka na lang dun sa chat box if you want to clarify your question. But for now, we'll proceed na lang siguro sa next question. So, um, will FILSA host a repository of geospatial data sets that, are, uh, that will be accessible to the public? That's from Jesse Florian. Uh, for, yeah, for satellite, uh, we're actually transitioning yung sa, dati kasi yung PHL Microsat program, saka stamina for space, di ba may diwata data doon, diwata 1, diwata 2. So, since tapos na yung program na yun, i-move na siya to FILSA. We're actually in the process of setting up yung, ano, yung data portals for that para maging operational na siya ulit. And if, uh, in case familiar yung inyo sa iba, sa, ay yung iba sa inyo sa DATOS, uh, part of that will be, uh, it will be transition to FILSA as well. So gumagawa din sila ng mga flood maps for DRR. So we hope to host that din as well sa in our own uh, data portal. You know, uh, in sa other geospatial data for vector, I think nasa uh, ano talaga siya ng numbery yun. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, yun yung yeah. ano talaga ng geoportal PH. And mm -hmm. so yun din yung sure. mandate ng numbery. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, sila yung main ano, ng ganong data. So, for, for us, we'll uh, focus more sa satellite imagery. And in, so, even that, I think we will have to share with them the ilalagay sa kanta. So, ano pala, um, nakatry na din ako mag-request ano, sa Namria uh, using yung electronic freedom of information. So, for example, hindi nyo ma-access yung data right now. Baka pwede through that. Tapos nag-respond naman sila. Yes, na try ko na rin yun. Uh, medyo mabilis sila talaga mag-respond tapos. Kasi parang meron silang time frame na dapat by, I think, a day mabigay nila yung data sa inyo. So if you need data na hindi available anywhere else, I think, yes, you can go to EFOI. And and uh, to add din pala yung, uh, yung iba baka nagamit nyo na yung Pedro na service nila, di ba may satellite image sila. Uh, Philsa will be assuming that in the future as well. Uh, yung satellite image nga lang ni Pedro, medyo may restriction siya. As far as I know, it's uh, hindi talaga siya publicly accessible. It will be more of uh, for government at state universities. So yung nasa government hierarchy lang nga lang, medyo may restriction. But we will be hosting other data din na uh, publicly available. All right, thank you. Um... I think ito na yung one of the last questions natin. So may I, nasagot na rin to kanina, pero I think this needs clarification. May I ask if there will be material sent to email, especially for, ass for assignment or additional information tools? Thank you. Uh, yes, I will give the link later. Uh, Nako na lang update so, yung calendar. Tapos okay, if so, you're, kung kasabi kayo sa sikap ni Spur, i-propose ko yung Alright. Thank you, Nico. So, I guess uh, that's it for our Q&A. Uh, any more questions from the participants? I think my tanong din from uh, LG uh, Oklahan. Yeah. Huh? So, Q&A. Uh, let's the chat box. There's a Q&A uh, box. Ah, Q&A. 
ano daw yung ano uh, magandang gamitin sa pag-develop ng JS web app. Ah, okay. So, so sorry. Mm-hmm. So, so I'll, ano I'll po it. ang ah, sige, sige. Ah, so, I'll just read the questions. Ano po ang masasuggest nyo na maganda gamitin, Python or JavaScript sa pag-develop ng JS web app? So, we'll, we'll bias kami sa <laughs> since kami tinanong uh, we would suggest uh, Python. Madali kasi siya. Especially kung web app na yung yung processing naman ay sa server side pero it really depends sa ano sa team nyo kung ano yung um uh, saan sila mas comfortable kasi sa totoo lang uh, kaya naman na siyang gawin sa ano sa javascript kung yun yung alam ng team nyo but kung if you have the chance to start from scratch i think mas madali siyang gawin sa python especially kung server yung server side yung processing okay ka ka ni ka Uh, kung server side, yes, Python, madali. I'm not just sure sa, sa front end. Mas customizable. I think mas customizable yun. Yung mas fit. Pag, mm. uh, pag-present ng data sa web interface. Oh, wala. wala ka rin try sa ano, front end. JavaScript mm-hmm. talaga siya. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah. All right. Thanks for that. Um, any more questions from the participants? Um, okay. If there's none, I think we can conclude the second session of Data Camp. Thank, uh, you. thank you, everyone. To thank you to everyone who participated in our Q&A session. So that's it for today. But before we send the feedback form, may we ask for a quick photo opportunity with our speakers. So please turn on your cameras. Lang din po. Um, Nicole Dre, RK. All right, please take the photo. Um, are you gonna take the photo or? I okay, wait long, spotlight. Thank you. Okay, hold your smile for five seconds. Okay, one, two, three, smile. One, two, three, smile. Okay, we're good now. All right, thank you, Free. And thank you, everyone, for participating in the second session of Data Camp. Shout out to those who have attended the first and second session. Uh, we will now send the link for the evaluation. Uh, please answer them to receive the certificate of attendance of today's session. So that's a wrap. Again, I am Christine Bantay from the Space Data Mobilization and Applications Division. Thank you and see you next week for our third session. Have a great weekend ahead.